I don't know where you are right now. Maybe you're running late for the soccer game or trying to find something to put you to sleep. But wherever you are right now in this moment, we're happy you're here listening to the Remote No Pressure Podcast. Do you have a dream? Do you have something you've always wanted to accomplish, something you've always wanted to do? Today's guest, Captain Joe DeMalderas, had a dream as well. He wanted to become a fishing guide, and that's exactly what he did. Welcome to the podcast. Let's light the fire. Welcome to the podcast, Joe. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. It sounds like it's going to be fun to be here. <laughs> so can you tell us just a little bit about yourself? I got into this business because I, I've been fishing since I was three years old and um, started fly fishing. I was probably 11 or 12. And immediately I got bit, started tying flies a little later. I was probably late teens, maybe early 20s, 20, 21. Um, I got real serious about tying flies. And then... Um, you know, had a real job <laughs> and, uh, because I thought that's what you're supposed to do and did that for a few years until I was, you know, in my mid thirties and hated every minute of it, but, um, did it anyway. And then one day I just decided I'm going fishing and that's it. I'm not doing anything else. I'm going fishing. Um, you know, my wife is extremely supportive, uh, which was a, a huge plus. And actually, my mother was too. You know, she she just said to me, uh, ever since you were a little boy, I always figured somehow you could figure out how you could make a living going fishing every day. Mm. And my father thought I should go see a shrink. <laughs> you know, <so> <laughs> <it> was, uh, <laughs> but but you know, it's, it's, it, it, I have no regrets. I uh, just something I, I just love doing. I never set an alarm clock anymore. I just get up naturally every morning and the sun comes up and. Um, nothing else I'd rather be doing. So I kind of feel like I retired 25 years ago. Yeah. And you say that like, um, you're retired, but you've built this thing. I mean, reading on your LinkedIn and your profile, it wasn't easy building what you have right now. I mean, it took some grit and some, uh, testicular fortitude for lack of better terms, but <laughs> I, I could definitely admire uh, what you've done. Can you just tell us a little bit about those first few years when you left corporate America and you went into to this guide business? Well, I mean, initially what I did was I got out of the business I was in, which was, you know, retail insurance and financial services. And, um, I actually downsized, sold my house, bought a smaller house, um, sold fancy cars and bought a used car <laughs> and uh you know it was a lifestyle change you know only because i didn't want to have it affect um i really didn't want to have it affect my family i wanted to, I, I wanted to make a go at it and you know to me there was no alternative um when my licensing came up for renewal in my prior business i didn't renew my license i let them go I didn't want to have some in my mind, something that said, Oh, I got this to fall back to because to me, that would just been setting myself up for failure. But, um, you know, I just decided I'm doing it. And, you know, the first, first year was tough. It was, it was tough, you know, and, you know, fortunately, you know, my wife was very supportive, you know, and she was, she was working and, you know, we, you know, we managed and we got through that first year and the second year was a lot better. And then by the third year, you know, it was like, oh, wow, this is working. And then, you know, from that point on, I just, you know, just went. And, you know, I, you know, I kid around. I say I feel like I've been retired for 25 years. But in, in reality, I've never worked so hard in my life. Sure. Uh, it's seven days a week, 365 days a year. There isn't a day that goes by. I'm not thinking about fly fishing and um, and guiding on, on, you know, every single day I felt examine myself i'm like what can i do better um that i did today you know it's always a learning experience and you know the guys who, who you know work for me they you know they have the same attitude you know and and you know i stress that always always look back on today because if you didn't learn something from today you missed something you know every day there's something you could have maybe done different uh maybe just uh you know 
how you taught someone, you know, uh, the, the uh, analogies or metaphors you use that you could use differently that, that may have clicked with someone better. You know, so it's, it's always a, it's always a learning curve. You know, if, you, if you're not learning something every single day, uh, it, things get pretty boring, you know, so you got to keep that from happening and it, it keeps it fresh and exciting. For sure. Yeah. Being, being self-reflective um, on a daily basis and seeing what you've learned is. Yeah. Is, is and, and, yeah. You know, Jeff, I don't mean beat yourself up because there's some days you, you, you kind of pat yourself on back too. You know, you got to do that also, you know, when, when everything went perfect and right and great and um, you know, you, you have to reward yourself for that too. Um, it's, you know, self-reflective isn't negative. It's, it's a positive thing. You know, you always got to just, look at, you know, not just what you could have done different in to make something happen, a little, you know, more positive response than you were hoping for, but also, you know, to learn what you did that really got to that point, you know, and, and so you can use it again and, and, you know, kind of stockpile that stuff in your, in, in, in your whole portfolio. Well, Joe, what, what took you so long? I mean, why did you, why did you do this in your mid thirties? What, what was it that, that pushed you over the edge? Was it just, you, you were more confident in who you were and you're like, this is not me or what, what was it? Was there one particular incident or what was it that really just said, you know what, I, I'm going all in. This is who I really am. And, and I think for so many people, they're just, they're searching for who they really are. You know, what, what is my purpose in life? What am I doing? And, you know, they may enjoy fly fishing, but they may have other passions as well. What was it? I mean, what, what is it about your mid thirties that, that made you just say, you know what, this is who I am. Um, you know, I, I was, I was doing well in my former business. I was making a decent living and I was doing some traveling and going fishing and hiring guides. And I was very fortunate. A lot of guides, almost all the guys they ever hired were, were great people. And they were passionate about what they did. And what, uh, what, what I kept saying, though, was like, you know, if, if you understand what someone's looking for in an experience, and these people were providing that for me um, at the time, it's like, this is really cool. I'm looking to escape. And these people are putting me in another world for whether it's one day or for two weeks. I'm, I'm in a different world. And, and, and there's something about that, you know, that people need. And I just, I, you know, I just decided I wanted to do that. You know, it's like kind of like being a, uh, a teacher, a, uh, I don't know, a philosopher, a psychiatrist, a fishing instructor, you know, all rolled up into one where, you know, you were able to provide the service to people where they, for that short period of time, totally decompressed and made themselves much more productive in what it is they do that they're passionate at. You know, the thing for me was I always wanted to do that. I always wanted to be a fishing guide from I mean, a very young age, actually. But I just thought, like, no, nah, you can't do that. You know, people don't do that. You got to get a real job. You got to go, you know, you know, follow the the so-called American dream kind of thing, you know, and uh, that's what you have to do. Um, and at some point, I don't know really what it was, you know, um, just said to me that, you know, you just, you just got to do what you got to do. You know, it's kind of like, um, like a Billy Joel song almost, <laughs> you know, you just, you just, you know, it's, it's your life, you know, so make it, make it into something. When you're guiding um, some of these people who may be um, in corporate America, uh, who may be uh, in a similar situation that you were, you know, what I've noticed, a, a lot of my colleagues that came out of finance, a lot of my colleagues uh, are stressed, uh, balancing life and family. Uh, you know, it's a struggle. And w when we go out fishing, I totally get what you're saying. It's like a moment. It's a respite. Um, what do you, what do you notice is, um, a pretty common response. Someone who hasn't been fishing for a while, you know, this customer hires you, 
What What are some common um, responses that you see? No, you know, you know what, what, what it's it's kind of funny. Is like there are probably guys, who, everyone who fishes with me, and, and I'm very fortunate. I have a very very high repeat rate. So the first six eight weeks of the season, everyone who I'm fishing with are guys I know. They've been fishing with me for some of them twenty plus years, some of them five years, but they're they're all guys I know, and you know, there are a lot of successful guys, but they range from everything from CEOs of Fortune 500 down to guys who were, you know, electrical contractors or, or carpenters or whatever. And um, the, I think the common thing that I see, though, is that they're just so happy to be in a different world for that period of time, you know, and, it, and it's, it's a total de-stress. And you know a lot of a lot of a lot of, a lot of people who fish with me. They're great guys. I love them, mm-hmm. and we've become really good friends. Uh, they're not just clients to me; they're friends. You know, it's like old home week the whole spring. <laughs> and but I'm sure I'm just because the way the world works, I'm absolutely positive that when a lot of these guys when they're at work, people hate their guts. You know what I mean? It's right. like yeah. it's like the biggest SOP out there. You know, <laughs> but when he's on. So when he's on the river, I mean, he's a sweetheart, the greatest guy you ever want to meet, you know, and that's a side I see, but I'm sure that a lot of these people, they don't see, but the, you know, the one thing is that the reason, you know, they're passionate about what they do in their, in their real world, whether they're doctors, whether they're lawyers, whether they're Wall Streeters, or whether they're, you know, just small business guys, they're very passionate about what they do and they work very, very hard. And at what they do, and they're successful people. So that success mentality transfers into their fishing. So they they do want to succeed, and and they're tremendous students. They're great students because they just want to be good at everything they do, and um, and that focus that they have, the concentration that it takes, especially you know, fly fishing, as, as you know, the concentration. Everything else is out of your mind for that day, two days, or you know, whatever it is. It's out of your mind. It's gone. You know, um, I, if there's some, you know, some guys that do need to be in cell range, you know, so we got to kind of stay in a certain part of the river. But, you know, most of these guys are like, I don't care. You know, I'm going to shut my phone off. And, and that's the greatest thing when someone says that I'm going to shut my phone off. You know, when I first started guiding, there weren't any cell phones. You know, it's this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, now it does, but, you know, a lot of people feel they need to stay connected, but if they could disconnect for that day, um, and, and not have a care in the world, you know, it's, you know, life is great, you know, for that time. You know, it's kind of like you're stepping back in time. It's like all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's 19, you know, 82 or whatever, you know, it's no cell phones, no fax machines, no computers, nothing dinging at me. And, and, and that's, you know, that's a huge, huge benefit, you know, for people. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a different world we live in now. Where, um... Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. You know, people are, are stay connected and you know, the, there, there are a lot of people anymore. They're always looking for the conditions to be perfect before they want to go on a fishing trip. But if you do that, you're never going to take a fishing trip. The conditions are never perfect. You know, so, you know, I spent 250 days or more on the water every year. And out of 250 plus days a year, there might be two days where conditions are perfect. So, you know, if you wait for that to ever happen, you know, you're missing everything. And, and you know, I forget who said it, but someone once said, you know, the best time to go fishing is when you can't. You know, to go. You know, yeah. that's that's great, man. That's everything you're saying is totally makes sense. Even with a lot of guys I fish with, it's like, no, I can't go. I can't. You know, there's always an excuse. Um, obviously, we have to have balance in oh, our work and our family yeah. and stuff. But there's always something um, to. to distract us yeah you know you can, there's always distractions and you know the other thing that happens too is you know people are looking on facebook twitter whatever
forever. And they're reading, uh, you know, fishing reports and, and looking at what's happening. And uh, they're, they're going on, you know, USGS water flow charts. And they're going on the weatherchannel.com or AccuWeather, whoever, and looking at the weather. And they're all trying to figure out, okay, if this happens and that happens, well, next Tuesday is the best day. Well, none of that's ever right. <laughs> so, you know, everybody's always adding more stress to the situation. And really what, what I think um, makes someone a better fisherman is to fish whenever, because you're going to have to deal with the conditions that you have and you're going to just become better person, you know, as, as far as an angler goes, because you fish in varied situations. You know, if we only fished where the fish were rising, well, you know, a chimpanzee could do that, you know? <laughs> so when you, when you fish, when you can, you just deal with the deck, you know, the cards that are in your hand and you play that hand and you're just going to become a better angler because of it. You're going to enjoy the game a lot more. For sure. Yeah. You can, you don't get a lot of fishing time if you only fish when they rise. So, um, I think it was Mal yeah, Malcolm, exactly. Glad Malcolm Gladwell. He had that book. Um, I think it was outliers. He talked about, you know, the 10,000 hour rule and, uh, the more time we spend with a rod in our hand and, and on the water, the better anglers we're going to become regardless if even if we don't catch anything, we become better casters. Or, you know, there's always something. Exactly. Sure. <laughs> something you know, else. I, you know, uh, I mean, I, I don't know how old you are, Jeff, but, I'm, I, you know, I, I remember, you know, one time Kurt Gowdy had said, um, if you remember Kurt Gowdy, you know, that sometimes just watching your line unroll is all you need, you know? <laughs> I mean, just just the, the whole action. And, and it really is. It's kind of like ballet. And I, I tell guys all the time, you know, just keep a rod strung in the garage or on your deck. Come home at night from work. And have a cocktail and just cast for 10 minutes. Mm. You'll feel like a million bucks just casting in your backyard. And within two weeks, you're going to become a tremendously better caster than you are now. And you're not even going to realize it's happening, you know, and that's all you got to do. And, you know, it's kind of like, you know, it's just, it's a stress reducer. It puts you in another place, watching your line go out, you know, it just takes your mind to the water, even if you're not on the water, mm. you know, and, and, and it just makes you better all around. You know, golfers go to driving ranges. You know, fly fishermen don't do that. <laughs> you know, I don't know why. You know? Yeah, I've got a couple of um, ponds across the street. And when I first started fishing, uh, fly fishing, I should say, I, I had this Bass Pro rod and reel combo, fly rod and reel combo that I got from a sales contest. And I'm like, I want to try this thing out. And then I just went across the street to some ponds and there was, I, I caught a bunch of bluegill. They're pretty, they bite anything, you know, and the more I fished mm -hmm. it, you know, the, the better I felt. And I was like, all right, I, I think I can do this. <laughs> so. Oh yeah. You know, I, I have a good client of mine who, um, his view of fish and, and, and I, I totally agree with him. That's maybe why we get along so well is first never be a fish snob number one and every fish you catch is a gift it's a total gift so be happy you know no matter what the fish was that you know you catch them bluegill there's no such thing as just bluegills we're going fishing just for bluegills mm -hmm. no they're they're fish you know and you know there's nothing it's great it's you know, there's nothing wrong with it you know it's kind of fun actually I do it a couple of times every summer just to go out on myself, stick my boat in some little lake. And I don't care if it's a bass, pickerel or bluegill that mm -hmm. bites the popper. I'm, you know, lurping around on the surface, you know, it's, it's exciting all the time. You know, uh, Anthony, Anthony Licata, who's uh editor of field and stream magazine. Anthony was fishing with me one day. And one of the greatest things I ever heard was that if you don't get excited when a you know a bluegill grabs your worm under a bobber, you got to go see a doctor. <laughs> you know? There's something wrong with you. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's about right. Yeah, my my buddy and I we fish for smallmouth um, at least one night a week uh, through the summer. We have a 
a small river here not too far from our office and uh, we fish for smallies and I love it. It's it's one of my favorite favorite things to do is to fish for small it's great. bass. <laughs> oh, it's just just fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Well, you know, it's it's uh you know, it's all good, you know. Yeah. Now, is there a, uh, what's your most memorable fish that you've ever caught personally? You know, I, I people ask me that a lot. Um, I don't have a memorable fish. It, it's I and mean, I've caught you know some really jumbo Atlantic salmon, and I've caught tuna, and I, I you know probably my most memorable fish was I was probably like twelve, eleven, or twelve years old, and I caught a brook trout on a fly that these fish were like this little tiny little mountain stream were jumping up and grabbing stuff. And I don't know what they were grabbing. And I'm throwing all these flies at them that I had this little spin pack, you know, remember those little spin packs that had a, like a bumblebee in it, a cricket and oh, stuff sure, like sure. that. Yeah. yeah. And I, I couldn't get anything to eat. So I wrapped one of the fly bodies with a piece of, um, chewing gum, you know, wrapper, the little silver stuff. <laughs> I just thought maybe the silver would attract them. And I, I threw it out there and this brook trout grabbed it. And it was the first fish I ever caught of a fly. Wow. That's probably, you know, I, that's, that's the fish I remember. <laughs> uh, I mean, there, there, you know, there, there are other fish. I mean, it's a lot more, um, I guess, you know, classy or whatever you want to call it that I've caught. I, I just, I just, I don't remember them as much. I remember a lot of fish I've lost and missed and fish I should have had and didn't, <laughs> you know, more than I remember the fish I thought. <laughs> but so I, I really, it's, it's tough. It's like the question, which maybe this is your next question, but people, you know, ask me what's my favorite fish. It's what I'm fishing for at the moment. You know, when I'm carp fishing, carp are my favorite fish. I love them. I, I, I don't want to fish for anything else. When I'm bone fishing, they're my favorite fish. When I'm trout fishing, they're my favorite. If it's stripers or alvies or bluefish, they're my favorite. You know, it's just where I am at the moment. Now you're based in New York, correct? Uh, Pennsylvania, Pens actually, but Pens we're right on the border. The, okay. the river forms the border between New York and Pennsylvania. Okay. All right. So, but you guide all over the world or you're mainly just in Pennsylvania? No, no, I guide, I guide, uh, in, on the upper Delaware, you know, east, west, and, and main stand of the Delaware. Um, I also guide a, a couple of, uh, places in New Jersey, um, rivers that, uh, you know, warm water fishing for two critters. And I also guide on the Jersey shore. Um, I have a center console I keep in North Jersey that I, and I guide there too. Um, but I go to you know, Patagonia every year, and I go to the Bahamas every year for anywhere from five to six, seven weeks. But I don't guide to those places. I just you know host trips to those places. Um, that's not my water. You know, guys I know there are just awesome guides, and you know I'm not going to guide to some. Not, I don't know it. You know, it's not <laughs> it's not where I fish. Right. Well, I really appreciate you taking some time um, with us. If if someone wanted to book a trip with you, where would they find you? They'd find me, the easiest way is probably crosscurrentguideservice.com. And, you know, there's my cell numbers on there, 800 numbers on there, a email link is on there, you know, the whole package to get in touch with me. Well, thanks, Joe. Thank you for joining us today on the Remote No Pressure podcast. Our next guest is freshwater, fly fishing, Hall of Famer, Bob White, the legendary artist. He was on his way to Argentina. We played some faux tag and he agreed to talk to us. Looking forward to talking to you next time on the Remote No Pressure podcast.